Here we are back, Bernard, our first hands-on video, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. So in this video, we are going to download the image from the Azure Marketplace onto our Azure Stack HCI. Mm -hmm. And, um, but before we do that, uh, let me first, you know, have a look at the prerequisites. So it's some prerequisites uh, also on that web page. You see them listed here. Uh, first of all, you need to have a valid Azure subscription. Okay, low brainer. Your Azure Stack needs to be registered. Um, and then we also do need to have an Azure Active Directory synced with AD. Um, and that's maybe let's check that cost. And so we're with the people, um, you know, look, look, um, or search that up. Okay, I switch to my screen. Mm -hmm. So here we see Windows Admin Center in Correct. the version 2306. So it maybe has already changed when you watch this video. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the problem. If you do IT, everything is changing always. So here we see uh, in the dashboard, we see that we have a registration is connected and uh, our services. But there's also another view here under Azure Arc in this version. Let's see. We are registered and also ARC enabled. Mm -hmm. so okay, this perfect. Is the first requirement. Mm -hmm. Then I'm here in Azure, mm -hmm. and you see under Azure Active Directory, I opened the Azure Active Directory, you yep. see the Azure AD Connect is enabled. Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. And then I went to Users, but I opened mm -hmm. it already, and you see here. We have two users uh, synced here. There are some more, but I, I use the filter. And you see Bannard is synced and I'm synced. So we okay. both can later use uh, Azure Virtual Desktop to log into our um, mm -hmm. published resources. OK. So yeah, that's we have good. to get our image, right? And we, mm -hmm. we get a special one. Yeah, um, I mean. Uh, we could use a Windows Server image, right, which you might have on an ISO stored somewhere. But um, one of the benefits from Azure Virtual Desktop is the use of a Windows 11 multi-session image, so a client operating system that you could use to uh, simultaneously allow multiple users to use it for better use of the underlying resources. Um, and for that, you need to do a little bit of PowerShell, or PowerShell helps to make things easier. And you could see it on my GitHub repository. So cost, type in aka.ms slash bfrank. You see it here. Um, and if you go there. Yes, there is a repository which is called AZ Stack HCI. This yep. one? Yep. And there is an AVD section on directory for AVD. And it doesn't contain too much. It's only having you know some things and this description of the steps that we need to do. And there's also for some of the stuff steps there is a PowerShell uh, code snippet. Uh, so if you scroll down for step number one, this step, yes, you go down here. Here it is. And there is the uh, PowerShell code I was referring to. So if you click on the copy to clipboard button, yes, and then. Open up a PowerShell ISE window. And, or code. Yep, or code. I, I'm, I'm an old guy, so I prefer ISE. Yeah. I'm not so, a programmer anymore. <laughs> so um, depending on the system, I'm not quite sure. I mean, if you have already the PowerShell modules installed for um, that are required for administrating Azure, so uh, it checks for that. If you have, uh, this step will be omitted. However, the uh, delicate piece is uh, step one. number, yes. So um, you have it, I think, on your list as well. So okay. let's see. So I will just run it and it will do yeah. nothing. Okay. Okay, that was quick. Now do the login, uh, line number 12, please, and see what happens. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so 
Uh, that could be the case on your system as well, right? So if you're working for an enterprise and have a subscription, they may, might require you to use multi-factor authentication, right? Uh, which is not possible through that dialogue. So the easiest thing would be to use device authentication and the code snippet is already in, uh, in here. So uh, could you please uncomment the use device authentication. I, I will do that, but first mm -hmm. uh, I have multiple tenants, uh, mm -hmm. and that's a problem here too, right? So I. Yeah. So if you one. want, yeah, I mean, um, if you want to pre-specify the tenant to be used for your Azure subscription or for the login, then you could do so. Uh, the code snippet is in there already, but I think it should do as well. Um, so if you would just run this. So I have so, to go to a web browser. Correct. The uh, the behavior changes. You need to open up the browser. Could be a different browser. Could be a different session. So just drop it in there, right? Uh, you are missing the N at the end. Didn't copy Unbelievable. everything. Unbelievable. I didn't copy it. <laughs> uh, no worries. Then uh, enter the code or copy and paste it. So uh, I'm already logged in. Yeah. This so so no. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah. So no further uh, MFA required as you're logged in in that session already. But if you would have done it somewhere else, it might have prompted you for a multi-factor. Okay. So I think this user has multiple Azure subscriptions, right? And we need to have Actually, one of it. Yeah. Right. So what, this is line number. And we are in the wrong one. <laughs> okay, so let's run line number fifteen to select the uh, to select the right one. Okay, there you go. Maybe I'll blur out some of the stuff. Uh, so yes. please choose the correct subscription. Okay, hit OK, and now the script will. You know, now you can run the uh, the other part of the the other part of the script as a um in total you don't need to really oh. you want to be yeah, let's try uh, let's try <laughs> all of it wait. or let's go let's let's be cautious only this <laughs> okay no that, hey, that's okay then okay let's um so it's sitting now the azure context using the subscription you've just chosen and now we are selecting the location because we are about to download a marketplace image and the marketplace images that are available are sort of defined for the different regions. So North Europe might have different or not everything that West Europe has. So choose an Azure site that is close to you and which is a major site with a huge data center presence. And that would be West Europe in our case. I choose that. Okay. So, then so the next now, thing, yeah. Yeah, so you can explain the script a little bit if we mm -hmm. just, send right. it off uh, yeah maybe yeah. we have the problem so what are you doing here yeah not so that there are some nice commands here and you can just read it right <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah uh, you know azure has a lot of uh image publishers so if you you know you can you can run uh if you want uh, you can Only run this the script. One, no uh, i no no, no take it. every take uh, all of it right i mean it will explain the stuff um and um, Azure has a lot of uh, images available, right? And these come from different people. So uh, I probably could also upload an image and make it publicly available for other people to use. Um, hence, we need to define or choose the right maker of the image, right? Which is, in our case, Microsoft as provider for that Windows 11 multi-session. So please run it. So I will run um, this one, and then here we do some things with the image, right? Correct, correct. So, so yes, yeah, so we select, you know, the maker, uh, which is, uh, could be difficult because as you see here, that's a lot of people uploading images from, it could be third parties, right, for, you know, their appliances. So type in please as suggested in, you know, the, the headline, Microsoft Windows Desktop. Now it's, it's in there. So if you read Microsoft, it's in the title of that window. Microsoft Windows Desktop, yeah. 
unbelievable. And there you, you know, just, yeah, let's see. That's good. That That's looking good. Okay, take that one. Next one would be the offering, right? So Microsoft has a lot of images and they, they put it into different offers. And that's a little bit tricky because you need to know which kind of, offering you choose right so we could you know be tempted to use windows 11 but that would be the windows 11 without the office applications right um and for avd it might be useful for the remote desktop workers right in order to have office pre-installed and optimized because in a multi-session environment some things in the installation might be a little bit different yeah. so um choose office 365 yes And underneath you have the different operating system versions, right? So could be Windows 10, could be Windows 11. Um, and there you we, we, we are choosing the latest one, which would be Windows 11. And also we take, you know, one of the latest builds, which is 22H2 at that time. Yeah, Let's get that and one. we have to remind you, depending mm -hmm. on when you watch this video, uh, there will be maybe a lot of different uh, images here, right? So Correct. we have to choose one that is similar to the one we choose. We choose a Windows mm -hmm. 11 multi-user uh, with, so that's with the AVD, I guess, and then we have Correct. Office 365 installed. You yeah. see that with M365, right? Yeah. So I click enter now. Yeah, or that's okay. good. And there is more. <laughs> there are versions. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, Microsoft updates these versions, right? Which is good because you don't have to update all of these update packages. So this number will definitely change by the time when you are watching this. And I've chose. I will always choose the latest one, right? You don't want to install all the updates, um, but. This one would be my preferred choice. As this I is assume valid. this is the date of the generation of the image. So that would be 23 mm. July the 11th, right? I guess. Yeah, could be it. Could so be, it's, could be. Oh, it's just a random number combination. Mm. So I take yeah. this. Yeah, okay. So now we have, you know, pre-filled the variables. So, um, yeah. but we can't download the image right away. Uh, we need to make a copy of it and the copy would be a disk right so you know we create a disk that has you know that is pre-filled with that image selection that we did and we put that disk into our azure subscription into a resource group and that's the the remaining part of that script so if you could run this one i choose this the resource group was mm -hmm. asked for i don't remember no, that's that will oh, come. It's coming. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, which resource group do you want to? So we should use this one. Okay. Good. So if you hit OK, you should now get a disk. After some time, you know, if you would open up your Azure subscription now and would browse to that resource group you should see a disk. Let me see. Here's the group. Mm -hmm. Because our Azure Stack HCI cluster is mm -hmm. registered in the group. Here it is. So. Okay. And that it's might take. Yet. Yes. So do a refresh of the browser, please. The browser or just the page? Well, Try either First way. The page, if nothing happens, the browser. Yeah, there is it. Okay. Here we have. So it. see, th now this disk needs to be downloaded, right? Um, and you could do it either by clicking on the disk and then going into properties. So if you would do that, for example, right? There is a disk export functionality under settings. Under settings, yeah, a little bit down. Uh, Disk export one properties. down. Ah, one up. Oh, there. There so, one. this would you know generate a URL, a temporary download link that you could use for you know downloading that disk, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I also have a script for that, um, which you know you could use for doing it. So either do it, hit the download button there, or you know just load up the second script. 
which we see where actually, we were. Yeah. So uh, tell us something. Uh, it's a little bit special. Uh, mm -hmm. The Azure disks are quite large, right? The images. <laughs> yeah. So. Yes, and that's the tricky part of it, right? So the um, Azure is not working with dynamical disks for these images, right, uh, at the moment. It might change, um, but um, so usually the uh, the size of the image is defined by, or the size of the disk is defined by the image, right? And um, initially the, the people mostly do a 120 eight or 127 gigabyte size of disk um, and we need to download it as a whole right um, mm -hmm. and therefore i need to do it most efficient right and i found out that az copy is the most efficient way of downloading or most performant way of downloading these kind of images from the azure marketplace or you know doing copy data copy operations with Azure, right? It's it's maintained, it's it's um, it's a cool way of dealing with large amounts of data. It's resilient, um, you know, and therefore I'm using it. Uh, and I'm also temporarily downloading a set copy on your system for doing this job mm -hmm. um, and then uh, removing it, you know, um, after that. So it's, you know, a small, tiny, uh, tiny zip file which can be downloaded from Azure. The only thing which we need to feed in here is number line number six, you know, because you don't want to download it on one system and then copy it over to another system using a small network link. So it would be cool to, you know, to place it directly on one of the nodes of your cluster, right? So, but doing so, maybe you just, you know, do a copy and paste of the folder that you have there and see if you can reach the server using that, you know, destination that yeah, you currently have. All, yeah, I think there is no temp directory. Yeah. So we have to make one. And now the deer should work. There's nothing in there. So now we have it. So that's Are you there? okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's on the uh, on the server, right? And you can access it, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. So now we can. Yeah. So let's let's run and see if it works, right? How does it know which disk it is? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry for this. So. Um, it I think this should, has to be filled somehow, right? Yeah, so it should have, you know, the the disk should be still in the new a new disk, right? So if you would run yeah. this variable, right? So if you go there, yeah, there should be something in it. We just did it. Um, yeah, yeah, there is it. Okay. And now that's so the you have script. to do the first script and then the second one. So I sh I could yeah. also copy and paste it not in a new window mm -hmm. yeah i could ship it i put it down here right okay yeah good point i mean you need to have the same azure login context right that we were using before right so it's now creating that temporary download url um and it will you know sort of create that thing takes a while yeah we have to wait yeah and then i would you know run that part as uh, in total i don't want to you know would not run it line by line as it would take too long i would say okay and i can so now we know, have it mm -hmm. so we can get oh, i have to undo this mm -hmm. Yeah, copy the whole thing and execute it. Yeah. Okay, good. So now, you know, it, it has the token, or it has the URL. Um, it will download AZ copy on the temp directory. It will then, you know, um, instruct AZ copy to download uh, the uh, the VHD or the, the disk from Azure. And it would also tell you, you know, the download speed. And there might be some um, 
some um, you know some glitches in the network at some point in time. Right, so you so maybe our m maybe our um, our recording will suffer from the download, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see. I mean, it's depending on your internet connections, right? So um... no, we we're doing local uh, <laughs> local recording, and uh, yeah. yeah, no, all good. I mean, uh, what you could do is have a look at the uh, at the clusters temp file or temp directory, and see if there's already some data there, right? Uh, I mean, as you could see here your your network is relatively quite fast so that's the, the whole that's image, the file but it's and the size <clears throat> yes so it's not yet filled so we need to wait a little bit for for this to download and we'll i think we'll you know speed up the video a little bit for this in case you have problems with that um, I know this script does not work with mapped drives. So if you if you use use to map drives, it does not work with that script. You need to do the backslash backslash notation for this to work, right? If you have other uh, problems, AZ Copy will write a log file that you could use to troubleshoot um, the download stuff. Uh, it might be related to proxies, name resolution, or something else, uh, or firewalls. However, that's you know a pure uh, should be a pure web request uh, for downloading that. However, a f efficient one, right? Um, and I don't think that we'll downloading all of the zeros or of the nulls that are in the VHDX file, uh, you know, from the from the disk in Azure. So I think it will be optimizing it. Um, however. You know, depending on your internet speed, that will take a while. So what will we do after we have the image? Because we don't want our viewers to watch the next 70% of uh, progressing here, right? Yeah, so once this is done, right, we don't we, we don't want to work with 127 uh, gigabytes of files, right? Yeah. Um, and therefore we optimize it, but that's a later video, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we are almost done. Now let's see how long we are staying in 100%, how long the 100% <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's done. Okay, it's done. So let's have a look at the, uh, at the folder before we conclude or close this video, okay. It's the same, right? <laughs> it's the same size as before, but now it's hopefully, hopefully filled with something. Hopefully filled, and it's VHD, right? This is maybe not the format we want and the size we want. Or what do you think, Carsten? Should we optimize that one? Yes, we will optimize this one. And okay. uh, yeah, um, so this will be done in the next video, right? Correct. See you there.